through him. And for his name's sake, we receive grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. I title the message, Through Him and For Him. I hope you got that. We just talked about that for like five minutes. Through Him and For Him. It writes here, through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from all, just Vancouver, Portland, Camas, Richfield, where I live, from among, are you sure, from among you, were, you, you weren't positive when you said that. From among all. To call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And the main thing that I want to talk about today is the power in obedience. Now, as I said obedience, some of you might have got a bad taste in your mouth. Because obedience is not popular. Right? To obey your parents, to obey police, to obey authority, to obey my teacher, to obey my pastor, to obey my leader. It's not popular today. But I want to pull up some scriptures and share some things that God's been revealing to me about the power in your obedience see we think Jesus was handed everything on a silver platter well, why do we talk about him all the time why is, why, is, why is this all about Jesus and Christians and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and it's all about Jesus and we talk about Jesus and we preach about Jesus and we pray to Jesus and we tell people about Jesus and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus see it's not we don't talk about Jesus simply and only because he's the son of God one of the reasons that it's all about Jesus is not just because everything was created through him and for him, but Philippians begins to tell us that this man, I'm going to read it, I don't want to mess it up. We should have all this, we should have this memorized. This is what it says about our Jesus. Who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, we're not done yet, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. And we're just getting started. He became obedient to death, not to your parents. Hello, not to your parents, not to the police, not to your teacher. He became obedient to death. One of my ideas for titling the message was obedience to death. I just didn't want to title it that because somebody might just leave as soon as I title the message. This church is crazy. They're talking about being obedient to death. You know, freak out. Obedient to death and even death on a cross. Therefore, please circle that, highlight it, star it. Therefore, God exalted him. To the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See everything was made through him and for him but it wasn't given to him on a silver platter. It wasn't given to him for free. Everything was made through him and for him. But before everything was for him, he came here and became obedient, humbled himself and became obedient to death and even death on a cross. See, what, what made the full circle is not that Jesus was just the son of God who came down and exalted back up. It's because when he came, when he was obedient, everything that was made through him now became for him. He wasn't taken up 
simply because he was the son of God. He was taken up because he was obedient. Everything that he needed to do, he obeyed and did. To the obedience that comes from faith. When we think of obedience, sometimes it's as if I'm trying to push a semi truck or walk <laughs> against everything and everybody, and I'm carrying this load. Of weight, of ob I can't even say it. Obedience. <laughs> Listening to my parents, doing what my teacher tells me to do, doing what my leader tells me to do, what my pastor tells me to do. This obedience thing, dude, is just weighing me down. Jesus came. And was obedient to death. And even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name. Obedience that comes from faith. There's no point of us being obedient to God. Because we can't be unless we have faith. Obedience that comes from faith. One translation says obedience that springs from faith. Springs from faith. Rod, can you please tell me how can an object spring? I didn't pay attention in physics. How can an object spring and not go back the other way. Now, to us who didn't go to college, what he's saying is for something to be able to go that way, the force the other way needs to be equally strong. Are you in my? That's English. So for me, to go, for me to go this way properly, I need to have something behind me that pushes me equally. The stronger the push from the back, the farther the object goes forward. God, and Galt said yes. <laughs> yeah. So our problem is that we're trying to obey something or someone or obey the word, but it's not coming from faith. You're pulling something instead of being pushed by something. Obedience comes from faith. I'm not drinking that. I rebuke you. I'm trying to do this without water. Obedience comes from faith. Now, my faith, I don't know about you, my faith is in Jesus. See, what happens when I'm saved by grace through faith, through faith, he comes into me. That's good news. Everything was created through him and for him. When I am saved by grace through faith, he comes through faith into me. When he comes through faith into me, my faith in him is the reason I obey. See, we're going to, we're going to a judge and saying, what can I do? What can I not do? Where can I go? Who can I not hang out with? Instead of being pushed by the faith I have in him. Jesus is a judge. He is. But he's also your Lord and Savior whom you devoted and gave your life to. He is Everything was made through him and for him. He has no problem giving you the right push to be obedient. I don't 
don't know where to, I don't know where to go from here. The Bible says that I will shake the heavens and the earth, and only that which is from God will stand. If my faith is in him, and he through my faith comes into my life, I got good news. You have something in you that cannot be shaken. You have something from God that cannot be moved. We have something that we're going off of to be obedient that does not move, does not shake, sleeps during storms, speaks to the wind and the sea. Invades hell to take keys that belong to him. And this faith that I have that is in him, from this faith, I am obedient. I'm not obedient just because somebody's making me or telling me, but there's something in me. And because it is in me, it drives me to obey. I want to tell you, I want to just show you really quickly. You don't have to turn there. I'm going to read these really quick. This is what obedience looks like in the first church. This scripture, Romans chapter 1, verse 5, you can do your research at home. Romans 1, chapter 5 has verses, what's it, what's it called, that connect to it. This, thank you, this verse has reference verses. Watch these reference verses. Acts 2.41, those who accepted his message, Peter, was baptized, and about 3,000 people were added to their number that day. Acts chapter 6, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Acts 12 24, but the word of God continued to increase and spread. Acts chapter 19, from beginning to end. In the same way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. This is what obedience from faith looks like. If you look at the adjectives in these verses, I can't believe I still know that word. I see increase, I see power, I see addition. In some translations, I see multiplication. I see large, I see strong, I see mighty. When there is obedience that comes from faith, something begins to happen in the church. Some of you want revival at your school, but you're not willing to be obedient. My obedience... Opens the door for God to move. Jesus was the son of God who came and obeyed. And because of his obedience was lifted to the highest place. Who are we not to obey? <laughs> it was through his obedience. Through his obedience that you and I became children of God. See, it's all about him. Because what happens when you're obedient is God begins to reveal Jesus through you. Through him and for him. When I'm obedient because of my faith, he who is in me begins to reveal himself through me when I obey.
Romans. I'm going to read this really quick. You don't have to turn there. Romans starts with this and look what it ends with. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. If the worship team could come out. By the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. As everything was created through him and for him. When he comes into my life, because I believe. And from what I believe, I begin to obey him. The Bible says, obedience springs from faith. Springs from faith. Not crippling. Not barely walking not pulling weight. Obedience springs from faith. In math class, in a few classes, when you get really bored and you start taking apart your pen, you know what's inside. You've done this 10 times, but still you decide I'm going to take apart my pen. And as you take apart your pen, if you're not careful, when you take the top off and then start messing around with the ink cartridge and you remove it, what happens? A spring flies out. And you're playing with it and then you pull out the cartridge and all of a sudden, ding! Grab your spring, put it back into your pen, put it back together, seal the cap and put it on the tape. And then five minutes later, you do the same thing. In the same way, I begin to obey when my faith is strong in him. When my faith is in him, I naturally begin to obey. I want to obey. God begins to move in my life because I obey. I have good news and bad news. The bad news is when we're not obedient to God, we don't fulfill God's plans in our life. The good news is that you just have to be obedient. Everything we see in this church now, there was one man 23 years ago who was obedient. Our senior pastor is not a superhero. He's not Superman. If you know him well, he's probably one of the most simplest, laid back, easygoing guys who can talk with anybody, joke with anybody, be a friend to anybody. But this simple man that is like a father to us, all he did was say, God, yes, I obey you. And when a man begins to obey God, God begins to reveal Jesus through that man. You know how many people right now in your school, in your workplace, everywhere you go, need to be touched through your life and all that God wants you to do is not show them you can fly or how strong you are but just be obedient to God 
my obedience will begin to reveal Jesus to people. I was praying when I was writing my notes and looking through verses. And I just began to break down. And I said, God, what people need right now is not me. It's you. But the only way people will have you is if I am obedient. My simple obedience to God and what he wants me to do will begin to reveal Jesus to those very people. stand up to our feet. If we could close our eyes and just bow our heads for just a few moments. If you are here right now and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there is a false assumption that many have, which is I need to go through a certain process before I come to God. There's a, there's a 10 step, 10 step cleansing process I have to go through before I can actually give my life to him. And I just wanna tell you that there are no steps that you need to go through or take to be able to give your life to Jesus. There is one step and that is belief. And the rest of the steps Jesus has already taken care of. Believe and be saved. Have faith right now in this moment that what he did, he did for you. And if you are here right now and you want to give your life to him, as eyes are closed and heads are bowed, can you please quickly just raise your hand? Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Before we continue to pray, can, if you raise your hand, can you please come forward here just for, just for a few minutes so we can pray for you? Can we just begin to pray? Um, I'm going to be, we're going to lead her in the prayer of salvation. We're going to pray this all together. Okay. Just pray after me. You can just face me. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Come on, the whole church is praying with her. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. That your son came to die for me. In this moment, I believe. And that he came for me. Forgive me of my sins. I turn away from my old life. And I turn to you. I thank you that you paid a price for me. That everything has been done for me to be yours. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you that I am yours. Lead me, guide me, give me strength to fulfill everything that 
you've called me to do. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. As we pray right now, I believe we have some people here.